Hey everybody, it's Brian again. We're here for uh, part four of the restoration of my Stanley number 65 block plane. Um, so, so far we've kind of got everything cleaned up and rust removed. Now we've put it all back together and we're going to try and flatten out the uh, sole. Now if you remember in the previous video, um, I had a granite tile I was originally intending to do this on. Well, I uh, took my straight edge, which uh, this is the straightest straight edge I believe I have, it's an 8 inch engineer square, and uh, tested the tile for flatness and what I found out by using these little feeler gauges is that there was a good sort of hollow all through the center of the tile. It was about uh, four thousandths I think so at its max. Um, I spent a lot of time debating whether that was too much or if it wouldn't make a difference and uh, then I thought to myself well I have another flat surface that I can possibly use which is the tabletop of my uh, bench joint. <coughs> Excuse me. My bench joiner. Um, so I came back out here with the engineer square and my feeler gauges and figured out that this thing is pretty much dead flat. The uh, smallest gauge that I have is a uh, one and a half thousandths and I could not get that under the straight edge so I guess rather than debate uh, the fitness of the tile for the task I've got a straighter surface I'm just going to use it. So I've taken a piece of wet dry 220 grit sandpaper and I've stuck it down to the bed with a little bit of this uh, oil here. This is just a general purpose oil. I believe I also got this at Cabela's. It's a non-drying, non-protective type, just plain old lubricating oil. I uh, use it for a lot of things. I use it for tapping holes, um, lubricating other various things. It's just good all-around stuff to have. So that's sticking the sandpaper down. Um, I've also taken and uh, painted the sole of my plane blue with some layout fluid. This stuff is uh, called, the stuff I have anyway, is called Dicom Steel Blue. I think I ordered it online from a place called Little Machine Shop. Um, it's basically like nail polish for your tools. It, it goes on and it dries and it leaves this kind of hardish surface um, sort of like it would with a sharpie. You know you could paint this with a sharpie you could even paint this with nail polish. Uh, but what I find is that this stuff holds up a little bit better than the Sharpie. Like for instance, the oil that I'm using here will take Sharpie off, uh, but it won't take this off. Um, you need acetone or nail polish remover to get this stuff off. It comes off easily enough with that, but um, it's just a little more resilient to everything else. So you brush it on, wait a couple minutes for it to dry, and it leaves this nice layout fluid. So as I plane this, um, or as I run this across the sandpaper here, we'll see if we have any hollows or high spots or what we've got. So, well, different people start with different grits. Uh, 220 is the lightest or you know, coarsest grit that I had that uh, was still approved for wet dry use. So let's we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so in the first uh, pass here, it looks like it's not in that bad a shape, actually. And they say from some other videos I saw that the most important areas are the uh, area right before and right after the mouth, and they're very flat together, so that's good. A little bit of a hollow behind it, and. Um, and then a high spot here, some hollows on the edges. So really I think that's pretty good. I might, I might give it a little bit more of a go just to kind of flatten this out just a little bit more. Um, but I'm not anticipating having to do a whole lot to this. So let me work on this a little bit and I'll come back and show you what I've got. Okay, so I'm back. So after a few minutes of sanding here, um, I recoated with a little more of the marking fluid and I uh, did a couple more swipes and here is what I have. So as you can see this whole 
front end here and the area immediately behind it. It's got a nice good flat on there. Um, there's a little bit of a leading edge here. The sole is flattened up really nice. Um, there's still a tiny hollow in the middle here, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Um, I also saw a couple of videos online. Um, I think one of them may have been a Paul Sellers. I don't want to uh, improperly credit him right or wrong or anybody for that matter but um, there were a few where they said that you know putting a little bit of a chamfer around the sides uh, is not a bad thing it helps you get from piece to piece without potentially inflicting any uh, damage there so I think I'm gonna not worry about that too much either and uh, you can see on the back there is a definite uh, bevel here. Um, I'm sure that's from use or something. I'm, I'm not really sure how that got there, but if you remember when we were originally testing it for flatness, it, uh, you know, rocked on the back and uh, we could see, or I could see that there was a slight bevel there. So now this marking fluid showing that pretty clearly. And uh, the rest of this though, it's nice and flat, no wobble whatsoever so I think that's super awesome not gonna do too much work on that um, literally I spent about three minutes uh, just working this thing so that was nice and easy uh, I'm really surprised uh, at how fast that went I think I'm gonna do next is clean up this bottom here and then uh, move on and start worrying about the actual iron see if I can figure out a good way to get that bevel fixed there and to uh, start getting it sharp enough to use so let me go ahead and set that up and we will be back okay we're back and um, what I've done while I was gone is I've made my own honing guide out of just a piece of scrap uh, 2 by 4 so what I did to do that was I took my uh, iron here and I lined it up against the blade with my angle gauge here until it uh, was just parallel against the side of the blade. I squared up a piece of scrap. I used this big piece of cherry here as an auxiliary fence and I essentially just cut this off at an angle here. Um, now what I can do is I can lay this bevel down right against the edge there and uh, it's good and flat against the uh, surface of, you know, a nice flat surface like this. This is my bandsaw table obviously. So what I'm going to do next I think is uh, take this back over to the joiner table, put some more uh, wet dry paper down there, mark a square line across here, start honing it and see what happens. So uh, any luck we'll have some success but we, we can't talk today. We shall see momentarily. Okay so I've moved over start with my honing guide and I've taken a few swipes and here is what I'm learning. Um, this primary bevel here however it was sharpened before has gotten a convex on it. Um, see if I can get this angled in just right here to the light but you can kind of see there's clearly a line of uh, demarcation right down the middle right now where with my honing guide I'm sanding a high spot right out of the middle. So I suspect, um, now some people, you know, on purpose grind uh, with a convex grind. It makes for a very strong blade in certain respects. Uh, katanas, in fact, are uh, oftentimes found uh, with a concave grind on them. Uh, useless fact for you there. But I'm going to try and get this one flat here because I think it's going to make it easier to square up this edge. So I'll probably be here for a while working on that. Um, I'll come back when it's looking better. 
Well, through the magic of movie time, I am back already, uh, although I've been working for a little while now. Um, trying to get this thing straight. So I've been using my guide, and that's been working fairly well. And uh, before I had a high spot on this edge of the blade here. So I've been kind of working it back and forth on some sandpaper here trying to get it to the point where when I line it up against the inside of my square I can get it to the point where the whole blade kind of appears at one time. Um, now it's still a little bit angled um, but I feel like I've got a pretty straight line going here. Um, when I put it in the plane body itself there's enough lateral adjustment uh, in the position of the iron before I lock it down with the cap that I can get a good straight line across there. So I'm thinking as far as straightening that up goes I'm good for now. Um, so I'm going to continue on trying to sharpen this thing. I'm um, going to go up to through some higher grits of sandpaper and then get my water stone out. So I'll take a little bit of video of that so you can see the process uh, but for the most part, we're going to try and get to the results. All right, I will be back. All right, so I told you at the beginning the sharpening part was likely going to be a challenge for me, and I think I'm playing that out right now. So what I've been doing is using my flat surface here and various grits of sandpaper. I'm all the way up to uh, 800 now. And then kind of working the primary edge here and then turning it over and flattening the back and uh, so far I mean it's going pretty well at, at 800 grit it doesn't feel super sharp which leads me to believe I may not be doing a good job of making those two join uh, but my plan is I think to uh, to try and do a micro bevel when I get over to the water stones so maybe that'll uh, help the process there. I also made a minor improvement to my makeshift uh, honing guide here. I just used the screw that I found somewhere in a stack of washers and whatnot to, uh, to get some clamping pressure on it. So now I can hold it in the right place and I don't have to uh, worry about holding it and keeping pressure down here on the edge. Uh, so, you know, I, I, don't, I never knew Rube Goldberg, but he and I are certainly uh, kindred spirits. Uh, but it's working. So, until I can upgrade to something better, I'll stick with it. Now, um, to check the edge, I've been marking with a Sharpie. And I switched over to the Sharpie because the uh, Daikin stuff takes a little longer to dry. And I want to keep going back and forth and back and forth on this. Um, so I'm doing that to make sure that I'm kind of keeping even pressure across the whole surface and not creating any uh, waviness. So I don't know if it's really hard to tell. This is the uh, night shift edition if you haven't figured it out yet, but um, I've got a good mirror going there and there's no marker left across the edge on that side. And I turn it over. nothing left there either. So I'm going to continue to work this a little bit more. Uh, I'm trying to get, you know, some kind of burr going here, some kind of edge going, and uh, then switch over to the water stones. It's a learning process. I have a feeling I'm going to be at this one a while, but uh, I will definitely check back in. Okay, I'm set up over here on the water stone now. Um, I've got a 1,000-6,000 combo. I don't know if that matters to you guys or not. I know some people go like up to 12 or 16,000 with their stones, but this is what I have. So um, <clears throat> I've been polishing the, the primary bevel here. That's been coming out pretty good. Uh, working on the back a lot. I'm, I'm starting to get really frustrated. Um, but just in the last few minutes here, I, I think I might be having a breakthrough. So I polished the back up flat 
and um, I started to employ what's called the ruler method. Only I don't have one of those little flat rulers, but I do have a piece of uh, plastic here. This is plastic shim stock. Um, it's 5,000 thick, so I've doubled it up to give myself a 10,000 uh, kind of, you know, step there so that I don't have to polish the entire back of this. I can work just on that leading edge. And what I'm starting to notice as I'm doing this is that getting a burr here on this one side as I uh, polish off the back there and uh, not a burr on this other side. So what that leads me to believe is this back still isn't quite flat, that we're still not quite getting uh, even um, mating of this primary bevel in the back here. So hopefully this is a little bit of a breakthrough and uh, I'm going to keep at it for a few more minutes here and see if I can get anywhere. All right, a little more elbow grease, and I'm to the point where when I hone this now, I can feel kind of an even burr forming. It's a slight burr, it's very slight, but it's there. So I'm thinking that means I've made some pretty good progress getting these two edges to come together. Um, it'll do the paper test, but give it a little start here. This paper is. Uh, gotten a little wet from some spray on my stones here. If I give it a little start, it wants to cut through there pretty easy. Uh, not sure it's good enough, but at least now it's got an edge on it. So I'm half tempted to uh, put it in the plane, uh, clamp up a piece of wood here to something and give it a shot. All right, well, as you see, I've been testing and I've had some success. So I can take this and fairly easily, way less than 10 miles of bad road with a lot of elbow grease like it was when I started. Get a really nice shaving here. Um, this really kind of makes up for all the frustration that I was having to get to this point. Um, you know, it's kind of satisfying now that this thing at least appears to be working the way I think it should work. Uh, or at least close to. So I can get a nice, thin, even shaving there. The surface that's left behind here is super smooth. I, wasn't, uh, I hear people talk about it on the internet, but uh, man, that is something. I don't even know if I'd need to sand that, to be completely honest with you. Uh, so... I'm feeling like uh, tonight's a win. Put a lot of elbow grease in, but uh, I managed to get some results for it too. Now, there's a couple things I do notice, and one is that I seem to have created, whether I meant to or not, a bit of a camber in the blade here. It's it's almost a little bit, uh, you know, curved, and so I can adjust it around. Uh, it always cuts in the middle, but it doesn't always cut evenly on both sides at the same time. So I think that means I got a little more work to do in there to uh, straighten that out. But at least I know I'm kind of moving in the right direction on this thing. And that is a super awesome feeling. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up for this segment. It's uh, super late at night. And I'm going to clean up a little and uh, get back to it another day. See if I can straighten that out some more. Cover, uh, cover some of my thoughts on the whole process and how this has gone so far. Um, so stay tuned.